Hey everybody. I'd uh, just showing you what I'm up to now, or what's going to happen. This is, a, I guess it's a deuce, or a deuce and a half they call it. This is an American one, so it had a dual fuel engine in it. Or it still does, I haven't pulled it yet. It's kind of a sad story really. Last year I fired this up after I'd, after it had been sitting a, a while. It ran away, <laughs> literally. So if you've ever heard uh, heard one of these things take off, it's it's a sickening feeling when you're standing there and you can't do nothing about it. I wrap my coveralls around the air intake, which used to be about here somewhere, and it didn't even slow it down. Just a big black cloud of smoke coming out of the exhaust, and this thing was going full very fast. I suspect the turbo, uh, the seal went out on the turbo too, because I, I shut the fuel off, disconnected the fuel line, and it still ran away. Like nothing stopped it. So I'm in the process of pulling it out. The engines are available for it. I was, I, I rolled it over many times. What what engine would be more suitable? The best one is probably what's in there, but. I'm not that close to one, like I'd have to go, uh, I think Utah, there's a, a supplier there that can supply them, no problem. The other thing is this truck, it's uh, it's great for what I use it for, believe it or not, all I use it for is to pull out stuck vehicles around the yard or in the field, so it never leaves the property. I also use it as an air compressor and uh, to move uh, trailers around the yard like uh, I have two empty vans and a couple empty high bo uh, light high boys and when I want to cut the grass under them I just just uh, fire this up that's why the box came off or is off and the, there's a fifth wheel on there now it's bolted on there good enough for what I use it for I wouldn't go down the highway like that so don't have to go there so I thought someday I might want to license this thing again. And one of the reasons I never took it on the road, it's too slow. You could get just about run over, believe it or not, with this truck. It does uh, 54 miles an hour, maybe 55. And that's right to the pin, like right to the floor. So you can get a different different gear ratios for the transmit or the the diffs and I think they're from uh, I can't remember the gentleman's name but it's like o Overson engineering or something and that would speed it up but it's also expensive like uber expensive put bigger tires on it but the fifth wheels high enough as it is I don't want it any higher than that and uh, buying tires ain't cheap either. And since I needed an engine anyway, I thought if I had one that could turn 3,000 RPM without hurting itself, that would that would give me what I wanted, right? So originally I thought a small block Chev and everything, but I didn't want to change the transmission. I didn't want to change anything behind it. So uh, General Motors with their five, what do, what do they call it? A 366 and a 427 fit the bill just nice. It makes at least the torque this does and depending which uh, information you go off of, the 366 makes more than this, like 100 foot pounds more torque and right off the bottom with low, arm, low RPM power. It'll also turn uh, in excess of 3,000 RPM. So, as luck would have it, there was one available in the, around the community here, so I secured it, brought it home. There's uh, most of the rest of it. How do you like my workbench? Self-propelled, about the right height. <laughs> so, anyway, I got... 
this engine just about ready to come out. It's I got the it, it's it's amazing how uh, not, I wouldn't say it's really easy to pull everything apart, but it's made to come apart. It's not like a modern vehicle where you need specialized tools or anything. Right now, I I just have to. You can't see them, but back here, there's uh, the motor mount bolts that are they're unbolted, but I they won't come out. I have to press them out with a the hydraulic jack. No problem. And the only other mount is on the front. Just be good. Right here. If you can see that. That's, that's all that holds it in there is a, well, three motor mounts. So when uh, that 366 goes in here, that's it's gonna have to replicate those mounts. It's got provisions to mount in the front. Mind you, nowhere close. Like this, this engine six inches longer than a 366. It's no wider, but it's longer. The other uh, fringe benefit is, well, there's a couple other reasons I went with the gas engine. Uh, the other reason is I don't use this that much, so. I, if I do run it on gasoline, I'll I'll mount uh, like a marine tank on there that just sits in a bracket and unclips. And if I don't use the whole five gallons, I'll I'll burn it in my trusty 8N. That's where all the stale fuel goes. And uh, gas engines can be converted to propane very easily, and that's my preferred fuel to burn for a. For intermittent use vehicles like this is going to be it'll uh, it doesn't go stale it, uh, there's just a lot of things I like about propane so hopefully next video uh, I have for you I'll have uh, I'll have that other engine sitting in there I have to once I get this out I, I gotta mount that air compressor on that 366 if not that compressor one like it and and uh, fabricate the motor mounts I'll likely have them fabricated at the machine shop they've got uh, all the tools and everything there so anyway wish me luck should uh, hopefully have a, another video for you in a few weeks thanks bye